Okay, welcome to the Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. It's the 15th of March, great to be here. So topics on my list, SheCode Africa Contributhon, wanna give latest report there on how the details are going and do some, a little more detailed discussion of the concepts and why. Uh, so got some things there and then Google Season of Docs application and there we need some further discussion as well and look at the pages and see, hey, how do we fit? Uh, what's the timeline, et cetera. So both those things need more, more discussion. So Meg, I think what I'd propose is let's not spend more than about at most 30 minutes on the first thing because I wanna spend time on the second. Are there other things that you'd like to be sure we get on the agenda? Uh, no. Nah. Okay, these, we, these two are great. All right, so then let's let's take a look at at what we've got now for SheCode Africa, and and what what's happening. So the project application has been submitted. So this is proposing that the Jenkins project would be a mentoring organization, and as a mentoring organization, what we're committed to in in terms of what I listed was uh, three people to mentor up to three people on one project. So the idea was, I want a single project that they put up to three people working the project. They are independent subtasks mm. within the project. And then the three mentors are Kristen Whetstone, uh, Meg, you, and me. Now we'll happily take other mentors as well, but we I got commitments from those three and felt confident. So I listed them in the in the application. Roughly how much time is this app to take from me? I Mr. think we'll take not more than one hour twice a week. I can slide that in. I don't yeah. think Tammy is yet real enthusiastic about the open source stuff. Right. I'm kind of sliding under the radar here. And I for a couple hours a week, I can slide under the radar. Right. And and that's and given that we're what we're doing is we're offering them two mentoring sessions two mentoring sessions and potentially up to four it may be that your time demand will be even less because it will depend on the candidates and what their schedules allow i know that with xenob for instance our our mentoring had to be in a very specific window of time during, immediately after her working day and so it was about 10 a.m. your time, which is outside your working hours, right? Yeah. So it's it, so I can't promise that you will be doing anything other than remote mentoring asynchronously yeah. until we well, know and what also, their schedule I'm not, are. I mean, I don't have the product knowledge that they probably need. What I can do is ping their pros. Um, well, well, not only ping their pros, you can also you can also guide them to documents about Hey, this is how this is how the product works here. Look at this training. Look at this material. So there are things that are familiar to you that will be unfamiliar to them. Yes, right. So, but but time with you. I don't know Kristen, but time with you obviously is much more valuable than time with me at last. Yeah. So so and that's we've got sponsoring organizations. So sponsoring organizations pay a fee. And we've got confirmation that the Continuous Delivery Foundation has uh, already subscribed and sent the funds. All right. And we're hopeful that CloudBees will choose to do the same. And I've the question has been asked to Broadcom and I launched the question also to IBM. So Ooh. I'm hopeful that one of those may, may contribute as well. Ooh, what if all of them did? That would be splendid. It would be, it really would. I mean, so, it's it's chicken feed for these class for these companies. Exactly, that's that's part of it, right? Is is a, a, a sponsorship of five thousand dollars is a lot from my personal budget, but for a corporation, that's probably not a lot. No, that's probably a lunch. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. So, um, so the skills required topic. What I did was I put in there that they need to be able to compile Java. Um, they don't actually need to be able to code Java. They just need to be able to compile it. Okay. And, um, and so it's what I'd call rudimentary Java experience. Okay. And some HTML because they'll be writing HTML based documentation. And again, that's rudimentary HTML is also sufficient. Okay. Uh, 
will they will need a Windows or Linux or Mac OS computer, right? They need a computer that they can do development on with at least two gig of RAM. And I, I noted this in the application. Okay. Do we need to say, are we gonna run into like Windows 7 and stuff? We, we might, and even if we do in this particular case, I think it can be done. Okay. Because so. there's no, no requirement for Docker. There's no requirement for, for anything particularly heavyweight and Jenkins itself can run in very small footprint. Uh, Oleg just recently confirmed it still fits in 256 megabytes. Wow. So, so if they've got a two, I, two gigabytes of RAM was conservative enough that I think that they can, they can yeah. have good experience. So now the the crucial thing there was uh, this this really is no no Docker requirement for the, the project, but there it would help if they had Docker available for the the learning part. Uh huh. But it's not mandatory, right? It's okay. not. This is not saying oh you must have Docker. It's rather saying Docker will help because a number of our examples use Docker. Okay. All right, so now the, the bigger challenge for me is this, this, you've already seen it, I think, once, but I wanted to go through it a, here in, in session just to be sure that if there's some crass mistake I've made or some flawed thing, the idea is that, that we get feedback from people that are examples, there aren't enough examples in the pipeline steps reference. And, and they're certainly correct. There aren't yes. a lot of examples, right? It's if we pick any arbitrary plugin, let's see, let's pick uh, the Android Lint plugin. So here it is, it says there's a step and it has a bunch of arguments, all many of them optional, but no description of any of the arguments. Mm -hmm. Other than that they exist, they're a type string and they're optional. So so that's that's not a not a a great experience for the person trying to and create. Right clicking on them doesn't get you anything, right? It, it does not. Yeah, so okay, yeah. now inside the pipeline syntax, um, in that context, you can see on the UI how they're positioned and placed. And when you're doing pipeline syntax snippet generation, it's actually a little more comfortable than this. But that's that's not the context they have when they're reading this documentation. Ah, uh, so that's what I was I was not completely so they can go in if they pull up the snippet generator, there they can see information that will let them do something here. Exactly. That's their research tool. Okay. Right. And and that's part of oh, I need to start my snippet generator. Just a minute. Let's get that running. I need this because I, we need to be able to look at it periodically. We'll give it a minute or two to start. But okay. but the the idea is that we want to improve the experience for people who, for whatever reason, arrive on this page, right. on these kinds of pages. And if we look at this is my feeble attempt at an improvement to this kind of page with examples and hints that, hey, you really should use the snippet generator as described here. Right. And when you use the snippet generator, it shows this. And when you use the snippet generator, it use, does this. So the idea is to be really crass about hinting, please use the snippet generator. Right. But then now what the snippet generator doesn't tell you is why mm -hmm. I want this particular plugin and a uh, step. Correct. It, it does not. For? It's it's not giving you it's not giving you an overview of what can that step do for you? What value do you gain from that step? You're correct. Right. Absolutely. And I do expect that out of the documentation too. Right. And so so here it tells us this thing performs a git clone from the repository. That's trying to tell us something about the step. And there are plenty of plugins here that don't even have that level of detail. Right. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. So so the idea is let's improve that now let's improve the pipeline steps reference so that people have a better experience developing pipeline pipelines. Um, now, that means pipeline steps, the arguments, and now the challenge is how do they experience it? And so what I did here was sort of a micro steps and 
Oleg looked at this document and said, wow, that's, that's, that's very finely detailed, much more than we would have expected. And, and it is, right? This is intentionally, uh -huh. I wrote it for, for what I thought was somebody who has almost no experience in, in this kind of space. Just maybe they've had some preliminary, preliminary experience. And some of the, the, the people involved may be absolutely dumbfounded that I wrote something this detailed. That's great. I would love to hear a way that was much too detailed. You wasted my time. This is just marquees. Yes, this is just why we love you. Well, and, and my worry was, hey, if I handed this to one of my kids that's not taken a technology degree in the university, I think they could still get it. That uh -huh. was the goal. Right. Right. Get successful, even if all you've got is is a, a, a basic, you know, you're starting your technical education now. Mm -hmm. So the first step was get everything ready to to experience the product because I'm assuming these people don't know and haven't used Jenkins and right. so they need a Jenkins account because we're going to have them do the issue tracker thanks for catching that by the way and they need to install Jenkins and it's best if they install it with Blue Ocean so it's describing that and then experiment with one or more pipelines using one of the tutorials or this online video, any one of those. It's the goal is do something to create a pipeline. This is not specifically saying you must do this or that tutorial because these tutorials that are linked here require Docker. And I, uh -huh. I didn't want to say, oh, you must be able to run Docker on your computer. Right. That, that's, that may be more than they're actually able to do with their computers. And then this one I was wondering Okay, with Blue Ocean, I can create a pipeline that has a bunch of echo steps. Yes. But anything more, I would be in trouble. I mean, because I don't have sort of the back assumption is you've been building your app with Maven. So now we're just going to call Maven and you get something functional pretty quickly. Is what we want them to do here actually is to just do a bunch of echo or I guess they come of print statements or something in Blue Ocean. Not really, but thankfully this declarative pipelines with Jenkins video. Uh-huh takes them through much more detail than just echo steps. Okay. And likewise, so these tutorials hint at ways that they can do much more than just a series of echo steps. Okay. So I was, but so, yeah, so this is, this is definitely vague. Yes. Yes, it is. This is not, and this, this, this may, they may go through several of these and immediately raise flags to us and say, Hey, I didn't know what to do here. I don't know what you're talking about. Right. And if they do that, then we would just step them. I mean, they could do go into Blue Ocean and do a bunch of echo steps. They, they could. And and if this became a stopping point, this is a great place for office hours to do uh, for mentoring to do a hey, let's do a, a thing together. Right. Okay, good. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, so, so then the idea was, okay, they've, they've at this point created a pipeline based on either the contents of this hour long video or of a pipeline based on these specific stepwise tutorials. Uh, the next is introduce them to the syntax generator because they probably haven't seen, they may not have seen the syntax generator yet in this step. So let's have them go through the syntax generator, the snippet generator, just to see. Right. Then another piece is, all right, let's have them do the Blue Ocean Pipeline Editor to see how it feels. This, what, what the intent here is during this, and I'm assuming this could take as much as, as much as three or four days a week for them to get through this in this kind of exploring. Right. And by the edit, by the pipeline editor, you mean the graphical editor, right? Not the code editor. I, I do exactly. That's correct. Okay. It's this thing. It's what it is, is it's this page right here where it shows, I'm going to click this new pipeline pipeline button or this create a new pipeline right. and walk through this very stepwise series of things to create myself a pipeline. Perfect. Okay. Now I did not mandate that they need a GitHub account but they certainly will need one. Uh, it's a good point that just having talked this through, 
Um, I thought somewhere down there I saw you have them set up a GitHub. At, at, oh, maybe I did. Okay. Let's oh, but see. maybe when they get ready, because well, they've got to get to the source if they're going to put the. Right. Well, and they could they could certainly. Oh, here it is. Join GitHub. Yes, I did. Okay. Good. All right. Okay. Because they've got to be able to fork the repository, right? They can't submit without being able to fork. Ah. So the the blue ocean experience here was okay. Let's get them through. They've they've created a pipeline using using whatever techniques are in the tutorials. They've created. They've interacted with a snippet generator. They've wait now. A wait a minute. Can, if they don't have a GitHub, God, here's my, in training, we've given them a lab where they've got two Gitia repos. And right. that's what Blue Ocean, if you don't hook up to some Git repo, you can't go any farther with Blue Ocean, can you? That's correct. So they'll have to either have a Bitbucket account or a GitHub account or have their own Giddy server, how they get there. There, there are lots of descriptions in these things about using using those. So the the three tutorials here all assume GitHub. What I'm thinking is that the attached to GitHub needs to come up farther in the document. Oh, that needs to be okay. the preparing. Yeah. So join GitHub. That's all right. We were just yeah. thinking they could do all this stuff without joining GitHub, and only when they went to do the writing did they need GitHub. But that's not true. Right. Okay. Good. Yeah, so we should at least put the join GitHub here, move that up from there into. And they're actually, they're gonna to need to create their own repo in GitHub, aren't they, to do this, to do they, to create a pipeline? They may, yes. Well, for, certainly for several of the tutorials they need to. So these three tutorials all assume that you've got GitHub um, so that you're ready to work with it. Now, if I remember right, I don't know that they, yeah, in fact, they have to have right access. So so let's just, actually, I think that hints, let's just move the entire join GitHub and assure, assure you can fork up because it's absolutely correct. They need to be able to fork already at this point. Good, thank you, nice catch. Um, Don't they, don't, can they use an existing GitHub repo to do their little first pipeline? They, or don't they need their own repo to do that? Well, what these what these tutorials will do is take them through how they fork the repo, fork a reference repo to get what what they what they want. Right. That will be if they are when they're ready to write. But at the beginning, no, no, no. no. You, this is oh. this is still this is still just the this is still just getting experience. Okay, so There's, what repo am I going to fork and then create my stupid little pipeline that says this is the way we build the... Here it says fork and clone the sample repository. So it gives them the instructions on which... Oh, okay, and they do the sample repository. Is that what they right. are? Exactly. Okay. Now, if if this is... If they say, oh, I don't have Docker, then, then it's all right. Then what you do is you do this other one where you use the, the instructions in this video and then you have to have to do more work yourself by watching the video, following the instructions, oh, do this, do this, that kind of thing. Okay, cool. It'd be really interesting for us to see what sort of background they have. Yes, yes. And, and whether they're like American college kids, by the time they get into a comp sci are already such hackers that right. they can do a lot of stuff. And I don't know that everybody else is that way. And, and that's, and I don't know at what point, you know, are these, are the, the women in this program just having completed high school? You know, are they 18 year olds that just barely completed high school or are they very nearly completing a university program? Are they in a trade school? I, I just don't know, agreed. Right. So this is, this is, well, my thought was this, this won't do us harm if it's overly detailed. If it's right. excessive, no, we're not damaged by that. Yeah, we may find it's underly detailed. But, right, and if we do, we fix that. Because they yeah. may have, like, do you remember DeVry Institute? Mm -hmm. And you know that, I mean, you just, you did a COBOL program, you copied this COBOL program, you know, and people came out of it, they could code, but they had no idea what they were doing. Right, right. You know, so, yep. interesting. I don't know if they're still okay. in business. Okay, I'll shut up before we go on. <laughs> so, so, the, the, so they've been through, by this point, snippet generator, um, 
Blue Ocean Pipeline Editor and the Pipeline Steps reference is the last step so that they can see the steps reference inside their Jenkins installation. The reason for each of these steps is each of these introductory things will be used later in their experience as, they, as they're doing a real change to a real plugin. Right. Um, back to the snippet generator, because you kind of, if you're working in Blue Ocean, the snippet generator is if you do something that Blue Ocean doesn't provide and you get into the code editor, right? Right. Or if you are not working in declarative, but working in scripted, in scripted pipeline. pipeline. Right. Um, should we give them a couple of examples of steps that they might want to look at in snippet generator there's just to make sure that they don't that they go for something common and straightforward and not some yeah so what i suggested here was check oh, out j unit dir read the echo document yeah and okay so yeah and and these several of these are sort of poster children for whoa that needs more documentation like input if i remember right is one that was high on the list of let me look at it. Let's see, where is input? I think input is part of workflow durable task. Checkout is part of workflow SCM, the number two most commented. I didn't put the number one on the list because, because it's, it's complicated and assumes things that you know things about Jenkins, like what it means to have a downstream and an upstream build. Oh, okay, yeah. The, 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 the most frequently commented one is all about how do you launch another build? How do you chain builds together? And we generally have advised people in general, don't chain builds, builds together, right? This is not right. freestyle. Yes, right. Okay, so sorry, we are running longer on this review process, but thank you very much for your patience. Any, any other comments on this, on this first task? No, I think that's good. Okay, so, so task one, introduction to Jenkins, to Pipeline, to Blue Ocean, to the Syntax Generator, and to get your Java installed. S step two, introduction to building a Jenkins plugin. So they're going to need to make changes to Jenkins plugins. And in order to make changes to Jenkins plugins, they've got to be able to compile them. Yes. So what this does is this is the starter for a novice in working with a plugin. So confirm you've got Git and clone the repository. And so now this did, yeah, oh, this is, oops, oops, that changed, right. So I've got a mistake here. We need another case of fork and clone. Sorry, we lost something here and it made it. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, got it. So. Okay. So if they hadn't already forked, the, tell them fork it again. Yeah. Or fork it. All right. So then compile the the, the plugin. Now this one may surprise us. There may be problems. It's going to download dependencies. And if they have notoriously poor internet, that could be a challenge for them, but they'll just have to wait. You know, if their internet access is slow, low performing, there isn't much we can do to fix that except tell them run it once so that it downloads those dependencies and now you're ready to go. Yep. So then one more step in this, in this build a Jenkins plugin is upload it to your Jenkins. So do what a developer might do of upload it to your Jenkins, restart Jenkins and confirm that the new thing you just built is now visible. Uh -huh. The idea being they're gonna have to do this whenever they make a change, they've gotta be able to see, yes, did it work? Mm -hmm. Okay, so next step. Um, change something in an existing pipeline, in an existing plugin, and see that you, and confirm you can see your change. Right. So in this case, 
It's also teaching them some command line Git tools. It's highlighting to them, hey, here are the things you need to do. Some of them, I assume, will have no Git experience, and we may have to coach them on Git during the mentoring sessions. Right. Others may already be quite skilled at it, and will just scoff and laugh and walk past it. That's great. Right. And again, so here we have them compile the plugin with the changes, upload it, and restart Jenkins, and now confirm that the modified help is visible and then throw it all away. Okay. Okay, now this, okay, we've now taken them into two preparatory steps. Now we're ready to do the real thing. And the real thing uses much more, much shorter, more concise, uh, do this, do this, do this, without saying you need to show somebody this, you need to show somebody this. I assume this is where they will encounter the, the, the the first set of significant problems where they say, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do this. Your instructions were too brief here. What do I do next? Right. Okay. So, so again, and this takes them all the way through submitting their pull request. And that includes, Hey, load it into Jenkins, compile the plugin locally, confirm that, it's the, the, the help you added is there and off we go. Now, what it does not talk to them about, and I haven't found a place to do that yet, is how to, how to find a good location to do that addition. And so that's a piece here that, that is missing. Let's see, how do we, for example, yeah, see some place there is, find the location find the repository see there's something missing here meg hang on just a minute okay find play a place that's missing help got it here are the hot hot pages from the this pivot table where is my pivot table link just a minute, I want that pivot. Oh, there it is, this pivot table link. So wildly cool this was. Here we've got a the sheet, a copy of the sheet that contains feedback from the last four years, almost four years of Jenkins documentation. And here is a pivot table that shows us which plugins have had the most comments. Ah. So, so this pipeline build step has had 86 comments in the, that period. And of those over half were either unhelpful or not that helpful. So, so clearly there, that's something to improve. Yes. And, and so the idea was, okay, that pivot table lets them choose something like the build step or the SCM step or whichever. And now I've got to see where is, yes, there it is, pipeline input step. There's a good example of, yeah, plenty of things where we, we've got lots of feedback that says, hey, this documentation is not good enough. How can you help me? Right. And there's, we want them to pick that out of the pivot table rather than just say, here's your choices. Well, actually, I, I list the choices in, in order here so okay. they, could, I see. they okay. can choose them. And if they then say, I don't want to choose that one, I want to choose another one. Okay, that's fine, too. Yeah, okay, cool. Oh. Go ahead. No, it's just junk. Ah, okay, got it. All right. It's, but I've got three landline sets in my bedroom and they all play different music and it makes a lot of noise and it isn't like your cell phone where you can just press decline right got yes. it okay sorry about that so no problem so as as you had suggested propose that they create an issue that they uh -huh. report the issue and then have them fork the repository clone it create a branch compile it locally this is the piece that's missing here is create a branch for the change 
add the missing pipeline help by finding the Java class that implements the, the pipeline step or argument and adding the a resource a file a, a help.html in the resource directory that matches the uh, path to the pipeline step. Now that's an awful lot of words. For example, here and this is where for example, yeah, the and I'll, I'll put this in separately. I think the git step is implemented in Java at and documented in HTML at this. Right, okay. So note the note the similar paths as between the Java code and the documentation. Follow the same pattern with the plugin you're you're improving. So does that any any so any concerns there? No, that should do that. Um, now, do we want them to do one PR per um, class? Uh, for initially, I think we should because we want. I think we want to get them to this point as rapidly as we can once. Right. Once we've yep. gotten them to this point as rapidly as possible once, then we can look at, okay, are, is this too small a pull request? Add more. Uh, we can steer once we get them here. My worry is if we don't get them here before the end of the four weeks, we will get no nothing. net value as a project out of their work. Right. And they will not have felt like they accomplished anything either, so. Right, right, yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, one thing I see up above, create a branch. We are not explicit, since we're being very detailed, that they need to create that branch off master and they need to do a pull before they do it. Oh, oh, good point. Yeah, that's and that's a very good point. Over the course of the four weeks, they need to be sure that they, yes, right, very good, okay. But Based on the current, upstream master branch and there we now need to do a, a series of steps so it's git pull Let's see do we have the fork we don't have the fork added to their remote oh meg you have found a very challenging issue okay so we need to add Get remote add upstream earlier. Oh, no, actually, it's just right here. And add the upstream repository. No, yeah, add, add the upstream repo repository um, as a remote. So now that means I've put additional description there that isn't in the first copy of that where it said clone the remote repository where, okay. Okay, that's, that's gonna have to go someplace and needs more documentation. Right. Needs more detail, good, thanks. Um, and then because, it, it just, and I did it early on too. I finish working on one PR and I'm in my branch and I just go get checkout dash B 
And right, at which since point I finally stopped doing that, I'm just stunned at how often I get somebody and they come in with a PR that has the last four projects they worked on. Right, exactly. So the, it's, it's very healthy that we, and Zenob made exactly that mistake early on in her experience as a Google Season of Docs contributor. Once so, you get it, it just doesn't make, it makes sense. But until you do, it just seems, why do I have to keep going back to master? Right, right. The, the whole, oh, oh, I'm trying to keep up with the other people who are advancing around me. This is not a centralized source control system. This is distributed. Yes, right. exactly. And, okay. okay. All right. Oh, excuse me. Okay, good. All right. So we need more detail there. I'll put that in later. Um, next topic was is sort of a, a, a more aggressive thing. I'm not sure we're going to get there in the four weeks with them. If we do, I'll be delighted. But this is just a textual change saying, hey, promote the use of the pipeline syntax snippet generator and uh -huh. tell people. And the one I used was the Git plugin documentation as a suggestion. Hey, here's a technique that's, that I use that I think is helping users by saying, remember when you use the syntax generator, this is how it looks. And when you use the syntax generator here, this is how it looks. Right. So now, oh, that's right. And this one is only in the plugin docs. So this is introducing them to documentation as code and to writing the documentation in the plugin readme. Right. The next one is adding that same kind of hint into the, the, the online help that ships with the pipeline step. Uh huh. And now if we've got somebody who's really advanced, this last thing is a really bold step. And what this one does is makes pipeline editing much prettier for pipeline development or for, for people who are developing pipelines with Jenkins, either through Blue Ocean or using their own text editor or the snippet generator. Okay. Wow. And this one is, it feels to me so aggressive, so bold. Um, I'm still working on stuff for this in the Git plugin, for example. Right. Okay, so we're at 40 minutes and I desperately want your feedback on another piece. Okay. Are you okay if we switch, switch tasks, switch focus? Okay, great. All right, so Next piece is Google Season of Docs 2021. And the idea there is that our application is due to them March 26th. So we've okay. got about 11 days. Yep. And my task today is to prep a draft of the application form to them the, the crucial steps here are that beginning April 16, the, the actual writing process is, is, can officially begin and we have to have hired and chosen our technical writer by May 17. All right. So then June 17, we submit monthly evaluations July, August, September, October, and then November, project is done. Okay. And and so so the challenge there is got to get all of the the phases or got to get this application prepped according to their ideas or according to their concepts. And they suggest project ideas that, hey, they might look like this. They might look like that. Okay, let's see. Oh, here we go. Okay. Choose the most promising idea from your, each organization may submit only one proposal. Okay, so that's different. Uh -huh. We only want 
we want one and it will need to follow this template. So crucial that I read through these and be sure I understand what the plan is, so, okay. And then you have to choose the one thing to... Yeah, actually the, so what, what it is is the, the which project idea do we want to submit is a, is a good question that we'll raise to participants in the office hours and the DOCSIG office hours. And probably I may bring it also to advocacy and outreach saying, hey, here are, here are two or three different project ideas. Which one should we submit to Google Season of Docs? So and do you have ideas in mind already, I assume? Uh, yeah, document Jenkins on Kubernetes is still hot on my mind. We mm -hmm. started it last year with Xena, but there is still so, so much to do on it. But that needs a lot more thought about what should the content be and who who does it, et cetera. If that one is bigger than I can squeeze into the time we have, the 11 days we have, then this technique we're using with uh, with she code Africa could also work for a season of docs writer saying, Hey, sweep through a hundred or more plugins or 20 plugins in the course of four or five months of writing and improve their documentation. Yeah. Cause this does seem to be, I mean, a lot of the guide material is weak. You see, there's a lot of stuff on, you know, this wasn't that helpful, but the steps are where it really comes together, aren't they? Well, well, there's there's plenty of, and that's that's another right. We had a we had a, a project idea in the past to Google Season of Docs, which suggested that we should improve these things called the solution pages. Where what these are is these are application or system centered um, pages focused on hey, if you're a Java developer, look at this, and it takes you through very very Java specific things. And it's this one is quite weak actually. Uh, if you're a GitHub user, do this, and we could have a page like this for Bitbucket. We could have a page like this for Giddy. Uh, if you are a Docker user, here's this, and there are lots of things we could talk about with Docker. Right. So, so the solution pages was one from last year and significantly improving them. But in that case, we really need, we need a technical writer that is willing to do lots of exploring to find out what should be done here and why. Right. Yeah, so here's the one. We call it continuous delivery up at the top, and it's all about Jenkins pipeline. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So, so we we have some project ideas. Actually, let's look at the project ideas from last year, because it's probably another. Those are good candidates for things we could consider this year. So, for instance, Google season of docs in the documentation sig google season of docs here we go so um plug in documentation on github github was one this is where we've transitioned about 600 600 650 plugins from documentation on the wiki to documentation inside their GitHub repository. This would be a, a great thing to have more of it. Right. Um, user guide rework. This, I don't think I can be ready to have it be a viable one for next, for in 11 days. This yeah. one really says use the thing that we had proposed, we had started the idea of propose a better structure for the documentation. And in order to do that, we need experts and lots of time to consult. And right. 11 days isn't enough. No. Same for administrator guide, but the solution pages, this is one that, that there are lots of solution pages that could be improved and much better. So plug-in documentation, solution pages, and, and the pipeline examples thing that we're currently working. Would a 
would a solution page for Kubernetes make sense as sort it of would. a high level overview? Because that's what I'm thinking, even if we get all the other stuff done, then I mean, you had the solution page because how do I get started? Absolutely. And a solution page for Kubernetes was very high on the list. That okay, was yeah. that was already discussed last year as part of the solution pages. One of the suggestions was, hey, we need we need a solution ah. page for Kubernetes, just like we, we need one for Bitbucket and we need one for Giddy and we need more in the solution page for GitHub. Right. Yeah, so absolutely. So I think that takes me through the, the, the idea. So it's the application is due, is due March 26, 2021. And uh, project and writing starts, uh, I think we said- 16th, it was, 16th it, April. Oh, yeah, thank you very much. April 16, 2021. Um, it, but given that their hiring deadline is is May 16, the uh, the practical reality is they may not start writing until they've been hired, right? The way this right. works is Google gives money to the Jenkins project. The Jenkins project then uses that money to pay a writer to do this work. Right, so we say writing can start. As a, right. What it does mean, I mean, in a way I see it, um, the day we hire somebody, if it's after April 16th, they can start working immediately. Correct. We don't That's hire right. somebody and say, well, now in two weeks you can start. Right, exactly. Okay. And then start needs to be singular. May um, start. Oh, oops, yes, thank you. Good check. All right. Okay. So, um, so Jenkins on Kubernetes, solution pages, including Kubernetes, uh, pipeline examples, the other one, what was the other one that we said? It was solution pages. Oh, oh, right. And uh, plug in docs as code. Yeah, good. Actually, wait. Should that be? I know they're the steps are part of plugins, but plugin documentation to me it's a steps documentation that needs to. Or, no, in or, this no, case, I'm sorry. No, you're talking about. The, never mind. You're talking about the wikis. Never mind. Yeah. So this is really the this is the transformation of existing plugin documentation creation of new in the GitHub repo instead of how we used to do it in the past, where That's people would write it in the wiki and then hope that somebody else would revise it and help them make better documentation that right. those hopes just didn't pan out typically. So we go, so is another one to continue the um, step, the, the step documentation from she code Africa. Yeah. And that's, that's this one right here. Okay. Um, do we have those? I was wondering, we have a lot, we have a lot of repos that all have their own Jenkins file in them. Could we pull some of those for examples, rather than going, you know, asking people to write their, to create their own pipelines for the examples. We could, but Is most of the- Workable most, or not really? Well, most of the, most of the Jenkins files in Jenkins development have a single line in them that says build a plugin. And they use a pipeline, a shared pipeline library to implement build plugin. So, so the, I intentionally stayed away from the Jenkins files in plugin repositories because they are they are not representative examples of the kinds of pipelines that new users create. Right. They're 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 created is by experts. That, oh, go ahead. Oh, is there anything in the shared library functions that we could use? Oh yes, yes, lots, yeah. but. The, the the stuff is exotic enough that I think it's beyond the depth of this group. So for instance, the pipeline, that pipeline shared library understands that sometimes it will run on an untrusted machine and other times it will run on a trusted machine. 
-hmm. and it adapts itself based on whether it's on a trusted or an untrusted machine. Uh, and, and that's a really cool concept, but I think that is beyond what we could hope to achieve in four weeks with, with these, these new contributors. Right. So, but I'm just sitting there thinking, I mean, if, if I'm a person and I've got to deliver software and I've been building it and stuff, I've got something that I can start doing a pipeline. I don't know what it's like to come in virginally and just say, oh, I'm going to create a pipeline for pedagogical purposes. And I'm pretty new to this. I'm kind of wondering where, where they get the information to do that. Yeah, I hope that that's part of the, that's part of their, their initial, you mean the, if you're talking about Google season of docs, I would love to reuse this yes. as a way to get them started, right? And at least say, hey, here are the kinds of things that you're going to need to do because you'll be involved in, in parts of these. Right. I, I don't know if that this this document will actually be reusable in Google Season of Docs, or if I'm just dreaming a pipe dream. Yeah. But it, 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 if all it does is serve us for SheCode Africa, that's great. If we get some reuse from it for other things, even better. I think that I mean using it in SheCode Africa will be our beta test. I'm sure we'll refine it afterwards. Right. Exactly. But um, yeah, cool. All right, I think that covered all the topics that were on my list. Anything else for you, Meg? Nope. All right, let's call an end to this. Thanks very much. Okay, I will respond to Melissa too. All right. Great, thanks so much. Well, when's your snow gonna melt? Is it gonna melt soon? Uh, we hope with, well, it's supposed to be 60 degrees by Friday. So we expect the snow will be mostly gone within a few days. Yeah, it does that much snow takes a few days to melt, yes. Yep. See you, well, Take care. Bye.